The maker scene is alive and well in Australia. Today we'll meet a diverse range of creators who share with us their awesome projects. This video is coming to you from Seven Hills in Sydney at the showroom of 3D Printers Online. They're my resin sponsor and my exact relationship with them is on my website. In my opinion, 3D printing is still a very niche activity, particularly in Australia. So last time I was here, I was blown away by how much this business had grown. 3D Printers Online have been kind enough to gather up a range of makers, either customers or employees, and we're gonna to speak to them today to see that making is very much thriving in Australia. We uh, started with, as a company called uh, Clip Depot. Um, uh, at the time, um, there wasn't a we, it was just me. Ever since then, uh, I've focused more on uh, the 3D printing technology and uh, uh, rebranded re and uh, relaunched uh, as 3D Printers Online in uh, 2019. I started in June 2020, uh, came on board, originally started off as uh, customer service and tech support. These days, my role is more about qualifying what the customers need to make sure that the machines are correct for them. Predominantly, we started off with consumer level machines, your uh, end of threes, end of three pros, uh, end of fives and so forth. And slowly over time, we've, as our customers have grown, we've now expanded into more of the B2B side of things with more commercial machines. We've grown um, uh, rapidly from a, a team of, uh, of one, myself, uh, to a, a bustling team of 20. And uh, we continue to grow and uh, uh, specialise in the space um, uh, in the Australian market, uh, which is quite exciting. So let's meet two members of the team that also have their own cosplay business on the side. So I run a lot of the social media stuff um, and um, a lot of like the community based things that we're starting to do at 3DPO and we're looking to expand into workshops and stuff to get the community more involved. I do a lot of sales stuff too. If you come in to visit us, I'm most likely the person you'll see. I mainly run their sales, so both email and phone correspondence with customers um, and I assist with managing the um, repairs and service side of things. I've also gone out on site for schools and help with helping with installations um, and every now and then helping out in the repairs room as well. Um, so back in, I think it was the end of 2019, um, I started what was only meant to be like a little 3D printing thing for um, me and my cosplay friends, just because they wanted some accessories that we could only really buy from the US. Um, so I forced myself to learn 3D modeling out of nowhere. Um, and then since then, it's really just blown way out of proportion. And now um, it's like half my income. Illustrious Models and 3D Printing specializes in 3D printing and modeling, obviously, um, specifically for cosplayers. So we specialize in um, props and accessory kits. Um, we also, we sell 3D printed kits for customers to finish and paint up however they want on their own. And we also sell their STL files for people, for people to print at home. This is our festering Desire um, sword, essentially. This was printed on a Ender 3 V2, I believe. Yep. and then finished and painted by us. We did um, resin detailing, drip fed the resin into the modelled grooves um, and resin printing for the gem. And we just finished a Primordial Jade Wing Spear Commission, um, which was very paint heavy um, and testing our skills with airbrushing. We uh, did a panel at Oz Comic Con last year where we did a intro to 3D printing for cosplay, um, going over some recommended machines, um, where to start, um, basics of slicing a model and orienting um, and finishing painting. So one of the other shows we've done multiple times is called Craft Fest. The first year it was when it was just me in like the very infancy of the company. And then in the second year we did just a big, like really broad um, intro to 3D printing, modeling and starting a business from scratch kind of panel for that one. This year we're expanding into build books. Last year we did fully finished prop commissions. So we're um, writing books to outline how we finish them in case people want to get the same kind of um, finished prop that we do without having to pay a whole lot of money for us to do it for them. And yesterday we started a um, sponsorship program. So every three months we're sending out a prop or accessory kit to one lucky cosplayer to sponsor their work. I'm sure you'll agree that the standard of the work here is amazing. If you'd like to see more, I've linked the website for Illustrious below, as well as each of their Instagrams.
Something I didn't realize until I first visited is that 3D Printers Online offers a repair and even modification service. So let's meet the staff behind that. So my job here at 3D Printers Online is to repair 3D printers, clog nozzles to burnt out main boards. No, we had a recent ticket where a customer's burnt out the PC by plugging into the printer and that fried their motherboard. So that was fun. <laughs> All right, so when we come to do our repairs in general, like Eric said, we do deal with repairing stuff with non standard modifications. So we try to stick to everything as by the books as possible. For example, adding a BL touch into an Ender 5 Plus, right? Perfectly normal. However, if I did something that's kind of beyond that, not designed for the Ender 5 Plus, yeah, I'm sorry, we can't do that. I first got into 3D printing through this job. Because prior to this, um, I never really did anything much beyond it. This was the first 3D printer that I was trained on. The Artillery Hornet right here. It was slapped on with a Raspberry Pi and then moved up to high speeds. But um, I took, I was, I was told to take it out and, you know, test it out, test out the basics of a 3D printer from there. I learned very quickly what this thing can and cannot do. <laughs> I've got a V2.4, a V0.1 and a Flashforge Creator 2 Pro. Yeah, chasing speed benchy records on the V0. Running a Big Tree Tech Octopus Pro with 5160 drivers at 48 volts. Got a Hemera for the extruder, external cooling ducts, and a bird air system. It achieves about 50 millimeters cubed a second. I'm down to six minutes 51 seconds. I think my limitation is flow rate. I can't get past that 50 millimeters cubed. I just use ABS. Does seem to have the best flow compared to PETG and PLA. Uh, I would get into Volcano PLA, but it's pretty pricey stuff. <laughs> to me, it was obvious that these guys are knowledgeable, enthusiastic, and experienced. If you're stuck with a busted 3D printer in Sydney, maybe give them a call. But what about customers? Well, it turns out this first one is right up my alley. They use 3D printing for motorsport, and they are Garth Walden Racing, also known as GWR. So all our race cars are primarily Radicals, Porsche Carrera Cup, Porsche Michelin Sprint, um, GT World Challenge in Australia, Bathurst 12 Hour, and events like that. Our core business is uh, prepping and uh, arrive and drive packages for uh, customers. We use 3D printing for uh, making prototypes and stuff for all our race cars. So we have BCN Epsilon 50, W50, with a smart cabinet and a dryer and stuff. Uh, quite a majority of our printing for driver cooling or getting air to certain places of the car. We make adapters to fit onto parts uh, like uh, heater boxes and stuff in fans or into windows and shrouds for uh, displays, MoTeC displays to keep the sun off them. We like to make um, quite a lot of mounts to mount certain particular components like charging ports and, and stuff around the cars to make it easier. And 3D printing is a lot quicker and easier than having somebody fabricate a mount that's tricky to make to fit to a particular thing. It's a lot quicker to just design something up for half an hour and whack it on the printer and then it comes off the bed, put it straight on the car within the day. But we might be working until late at night trying to get a part out and then you get halfway through a job at nine o'clock at night and realise you need a part that is not going to be possible to get. We end up just designing it up, printing it and putting it on the part a couple hours later and then um, and getting us to the track on time. I had no idea race cars would have so many 3D printed parts, and if you are a budding racer, I've linked the GWR website below. Our next maker is Central Coast 3D Printing, who has produced some awesome creations for their customers. So our primary business is uh, 3D printing on demand for business, for general consumers, for industry. Replacement parts that you might not be able to get for a a sewing machine, say, anymore, right up to uh, high-end uh, parts out of Peak and Ultim and uh, high-end plastics like that. Uh, in between, there's um, commercial stuff where we do. We might print um, production runs of uh, end-use parts. Uh, we use a range of printers from Sidewinder Artillery to Flashforge, a lot of any cubic large format printers, uh, right up to uh, Intensis high-temperature printers. So this is uh, cylinder block for and made out of um, carbon fibre Ultim 1010. Uh, very light, very strong, uh, and it's a bit of a replacement for aluminium where you need to save in weight. Uh, this is a 
a car vent designed for a, a really old uh, Di Tommaso sports car. Uh, it was uh, had to be designed by myself. Uh, and then we printed a number of these for the car, along with the fan for the air conditioning in the engine bay, which was printed out of nylon with carbon fibre in it. Uh, other plastics we might use for industry uh, is uh, polysulfone, uh, and it's uh, resilient to any known liquid below 200 degrees, acids, bases, oils. So that's actually a sump plug for a vehicle that we're going to use. Other areas are things like um, aluminium extrusions for um, lighting companies where they test run the aluminium extrusion to see if it's going to fit the lights and the location it's going. We do a bit of cosplay stuff, so we've got, uh, this is a fully finished print. So this piece has uh, not only been uh, printed in a single piece, but it's also been fully finished, painted by us. That's just come straight off the printer this morning, so it still has all the support, but uh, it's printed in a single piece on, on a big Delta printer. That's about an 80 hour print. I printed a bit slower than normal because uh, I like to get the finish a bit nicer. Again, another finished piece, which is uh, uh, the Idol from Raiders of the Lost Ark. I make quite a few of these uh, for people who are cosplaying as Indiana Jones. As an example of the detail you can get in resin printing is our tiny little uh, redback spider. With the biggest prop we've ever uh, made. Uh, it weighs about six kilos and it's made up of about 16 pieces, uh, fully printed and, and weathered. Uh, we're quite proud of the, the way it came out. It took a, a, quite a number of hours to to print and, and put together and, and fix up. One more set of makers, we have a pairing that not only offers 3D printing, but engineering services too. So we're Any Solution. Um, our company is firstly a engineering company, and then secondly a 3D printing company, which we add value through. So we're involved at Any Solution with the whole range because we are engineers, we're electrical and mechanical engineers. We, are, we have clients where we have to design things for them um, and that's from, you know, from just the, the drawing boards to the actual CAD models and then the prints. Um, we also have an online quoting tool where you can jump on, throw your models, get an instant quote and we'll print, um, our print farm will take care of the rest and we'll get it shipped out to you. So we cover both sides um, from on demand and also custom parts. In our farm we've currently got um, a range of FDM printers mainly Prusas, but the Creality is from 3DPO's. We cover SLA, so we've got our, our Anticubics. We've also got the capabilities for SL, SLM and SLS as well. So an example of a, of a scale model job that we've done is a, a safety hatch. Really what the customer was looking for there was to have um, a handheld uh, functioning scale model and not only have the customer inspect the product before it gets fabricated, but also have them be able to showcase that to their clients as well. I think that's really one of the great benefits of 3D printing is you can sort of showcase these uh, pieces um, and, and even put you know, little motors or LEDs to really add to uh, the realism of that part. We do have a lot of clients where they've come up with ideas that they uh, are, not, are not ready to disclose. So we do a lot of NDA agreements with them. This is for brand new inventions, parts that are entering the market from scratch, as well as just companies that also have their clients and um, you know when you're working in in some of these industrial engineering um, companies you know information is really sensitive designs are really sensitive and although we can you know help them out and add value with our 3d prints we still have to make sure that we're not sharing too much honestly it was a privilege to meet all of these creative makers all of them were knowledgeable passionate and enthusiastic a very special thank you to Robin for organising the whole event and letting me meet all of these people. The maker community in Sydney is thriving and it's only going to get better. Every day we come in there is a, there is a new product coming out or a new community mod coming out for a particular printer. Uh, you know, that just opens people's minds to uh, what they could possibly do. I don't think we've seen the full potential of this industry and what we can do. I couldn't agree more. Let me know your favourite maker in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing and making. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.